This story is titled, My Parents Abandoned Me for New Families. Now they want me back after my big inheritance. OP starts by saying, Hey everyone, so I, 16F, ended up moving in with my uncle last year when I was 15. It might sound dramatic, but trust me, it wasn't something I planned on. Things at home just got so bad that I didn't really feel like I had a choice. I mean, my parents both remarried and started these new perfect families, and I got left behind. It's like they hit the reset button on their lives and, well, forgot about me. My dad got remarried first to this woman who I'd later find out was actually his mistress while he was still with my mom. Real classy, right? She already had a kid, a son who was around my age, and then they had a baby girl together, and from that moment on, it was all about his new family. It was like I was there out of obligation, not because he actually wanted me around. My dad acted like he was doing me some huge favor just by letting me stay at his place, and his wife. Let's just say she made it clear I wasn't wanted. She was nice when dad was around, all smiles and sweetheart this and darling that, but the second he left, she'd turn on me. She'd say things like, you know, nobody really wants you here. She'd say it all casually, with this fake smile like she was being helpful, and she'd always do it when dad was out, so if I ever brought it up, it'd just be my word against hers. It sucked. I'd sit there, just trying to get through a meal without feeling like I didn't belong. Every time she'd make one of those comments, I'd just retreat further and further into myself, trying to avoid her as much as possible. Over at my mom's place, things weren't any better. She remarried too, and had a new baby with her husband. And honestly, it was the same deal. Suddenly it was all about her new family, as if I was just extra baggage. My mom would plan fun stuff with her husband and the baby, like little weekend trips or dinners out, and then leave me behind to watch the house. If I asked to go, she'd make some excuse or say it was just for the three of them, and every time she'd leave, she'd give me this little pat on the back saying, be a good girl and take care of the house, like I was some unpaid babysitter instead of her kid. The worst part? I'd catch them planning things for the weekends when I'd be at my dad's, so they'd never have to include me. And my dad would do the exact same thing. It was like they coordinated it, making sure every family moment didn't include me. They were both too caught up with their new spouses and their fresh starts to even notice that they were leaving me out. Or maybe they did notice, and they just didn't care. To make it even clearer where I stood, you could barely even find a picture of me at either house. There were framed photos everywhere of them, my half-siblings, and their new happy families, but almost none of me. At my dad's, there were massive portraits of my stepbrother and half-sister, but when I looked around for myself, I'd find maybe a tiny picture of me hidden in a hallway or something. It felt like I was being erased, like I wasn't even a part of their lives anymore. After a while, I started staying over at friends' houses as much as I could. I'd make any excuse not to go back to either of my parents' places, even if it meant crashing on a friend's couch. It was better than sitting around at home, pretending like I was part of a family that didn't want me. But when I was home, I tried to make myself as invisible as possible, staying in my room, avoiding everyone. I knew if I even tried to talk to them, it'd turn into a lecture about my attitude or how I was acting out. Both of them would compare me to my step-siblings, going on about how polite they were, how respectful. I was constantly reminded of how I wasn't measuring up, even though I wasn't doing anything wrong. At some point, I figured that maybe the best way to get through this was to just lay low and wait it out. But the thing is, that doesn't really work when you're in a house with people who don't even want you there. And it's not like they even tried to hide it. They were constantly planning big trips or family outings, and they never even thought to ask if I wanted to come. They'd make plans right in front of me, as if I was invisible, and then they'd be gone, leaving me alone in an empty house while they were out being the happy family they always wanted to be. One weekend, my dad and stepmom went on a family trip with my half-siblings. They didn't even tell me. I found out because I walked into the kitchen and noticed all the bags were gone. When I called my dad to ask where they were, my stepmom picked up and just said, oh, we thought you'd be fine on your own. She didn't even try to pretend that I was missed. That was the last straw. I knew then that this was more than just them being busy. This was intentional. They didn't want me around and they They were doing everything in their power to make sure I knew it. I packed a bag that night, just a few clothes and things, and decided I needed a break from all of it. I didn't really know where I was going. I just knew I couldn't stay. I ended up crashing at a friend's house for a few days, not even telling my parents where I was. And when I finally went back, they were livid. Both my mom and dad acted like I'd done something horrible, lecturing me for running away and saying how disappointed they were in my behavior. They kept going on about how they were worried sick, but it was all just words. I knew they didn't care about me. They only cared about how my actions made them look. 
At that point, I was done. I couldn't handle the constant feeling of being unwanted, of being this inconvenience they had to deal with. I didn't know where else to turn, so I called my uncle. He'd always been kind to me, always tried to keep in touch even when my parents were too busy with their new families. I didn't know what to expect, but I figured things couldn't be worse than what I was dealing with at my parents' houses. The idea of actually moving in with him hadn't crossed my mind at first. I just needed to talk to someone who wouldn't make me feel like a burden or an outsider. I I called him late that night, barely holding it together, just saying, I can't stay here anymore. Without a second of hesitation, my uncle told me to pack my things. He didn't need a full explanation or a sob story. He just said, I'll be there soon. And that was all I needed to hear. I threw everything I could into a bag. My clothes, a few books, anything I thought I might want. It was messy, and I left behind half my stuff, but I didn't care. I just wanted out. The idea of staying another night in that house, pretending I was okay, wasn't an option anymore. When my uncle pulled up, he didn't ask a bunch of questions or try to force some big heart-to-heart talk on me. He just loaded my stuff into the car, gave me this reassuring nod, and said, let's get you settled. That was it. He knew I needed space, and he gave it to me. I didn't feel judged or like I had to explain myself. I was just safe. The first night at my uncle's was strange, but in a good way. He set me up in a guest room, and for the first time in months, I felt like I could actually breathe. He made me dinner, and it was nothing fancy. Just some pasta he threw together quickly, but it felt like the best meal I'd had in forever. We didn't talk much. I think he understood that I was exhausted, both physically and mentally. I just sat there, eating quietly, feeling this sense of calm that I hadn't felt in a long time. Over the next few days, I started to feel like a normal person again. My uncle wasn't constantly breathing down my neck about my attitude or giving me those judgmental looks my parents always did. He'd ask how I was doing, check in, but he never pushed. He treated me like an actual person, not a problem to be fixed or a burden to deal with. It was something I hadn't experienced in ages, and I honestly didn't realize how much I'd needed it. He kept things simple, never making a big deal out of me moving in, which was a relief. He'd say things like, you're family, this is your home too, and I knew he meant it. He was patient and calm, letting me settle in at my own pace. I started unpacking bit by bit, hanging up my clothes, and actually making the room my own. It felt weird, having a space where I wasn't just waiting for the next argument or the next time I'd feel like I was intruding. One night, after about a week of living with him, he came into my room and sat down, just casually, like he was just just hanging out. He looked at me and said, you don't have to explain anything if you don't want to, but if there's anything you need, just say the word. It wasn't a demand or some forced bonding moment. It was just his way of saying he was there for me. No questions asked. And I believed him. Eventually, I started opening up. Not all at once, but little by little. I told him about my dad and how he'd pretty much replaced me with his new family. How my stepmom would make these nasty little comments that made me feel like I wasn't wanted. And I told him about my mom, how she always put her new family first and never seemed to care if I was part of it or not. He just listened, nodding along, letting me get everything off my chest without interrupting. He didn't say much, but I could tell he was angry. Not at me, but at how I'd been treated. It was like he was letting me know that, yeah, it wasn't okay, but he'd make sure I didn't have to go through that here. Living with my uncle turned out to be exactly what I needed. He gave me the stability I'd been missing for so long. He'd leave little notes for me. Just things like, leftovers in the fridge, or good luck with your test today. Stuff that probably sounds small, but to me, it was huge. It was proof that he cared that I actually mattered to someone. One afternoon, I remember him telling me, you're not alone in this, okay? You've got people who care about you. And that hit me hard because honestly, I'd forgotten what that felt like. I'd spent so long feeling like I didn't belong anywhere. Like I was just some unwanted extra in my parents' lives that I'd stopped expecting anyone to actually care. For the first time, I had a sense of home that wasn't tied to walking on eggshells or being invisible. My uncle made sure I knew I was welcome, that I didn't have to prove my worth to him or act a certain way to be accepted. It was just me, and that was enough. And for once, that felt pretty damn good. Then, just as I was starting to feel safe, everything changed. My uncle passed away suddenly, and I felt like the ground had been ripped out from under me. One minute, he was there, making pancakes in the kitchen, and asking how my day was. The next, he was gone, and I was left feeling like I'd lost the only person who ever really cared about me. I didn't know what to do with myself. I mean, my uncle had been my rock, the one person I could count on. Losing him was like reliving all the worst moments of my life, but all 
all at once. It was like I'd been tossed back into that feeling of being alone and unwanted. Except this time, it hurt even more because I knew what it was like to feel valued. After the funeral, I found out that my uncle had left everything to me. His house, his savings, everything. I didn't know how to process it. He'd made sure I'd be okay even if he couldn't be there to look out for me. But right when I thought I could just grieve in peace and try to figure things out, guess who shows up? My parents. It started with my mom calling. She didn't say anything about my uncle, didn't even offer condolences. Instead, she launched straight into, we're worried about you, sweetheart. We think it'd be best if you came home, where we can take care of things for you. She tried to sound all motherly and concerned, but it felt fake. I could tell from her tone that she wasn't interested in me. She was interested in what I'd inherited. She even suggested that I'd be overwhelmed, trying to handle all the responsibilities on my own. Then my dad called, and he was even more obvious. He started going on about how I was too young to manage a house, and that he could help by taking over the finances for me. He said it all casual, like it was no big deal, but I knew what he was really after. He wasn't there for me. He was there for what my uncle had left me. I told both of them I wasn't interested. I said I could handle things on my own, and I didn't need their help. They didn't like that answer. My dad got all huffy, saying I was being ungrateful, and that I didn't understand how hard it was to manage a property. My mom tried to guilt trip me, telling me how much they missed me and how they wanted to rebuild our relationship, but they hadn't missed me when they were building their new lives. They missed me now, when I suddenly had something they wanted. A few days later, they showed up at my uncle's house, acting all concerned trying to force their way back into my life. My mom started talking about how I'd been distant and that they just wanted what was best for me. She even brought up all these memories from when I was little, trying to remind me of the good times. Like that would magically make me forget everything they'd put me through. Then my dad jumped in, going on about how family should stick together and how they were willing to forgive everything if I just came back home. Willing to forgive, like I was the one who'd done something wrong. That part stung more than I wanted to admit. It was like they were rewriting the whole thing, making me out to be the bad guy for needing space and finally having a chance to feel like I mattered. I just stood there, listening to them ramble, trying to stay calm. I didn't owe them anything, and I wasn't about to let them guilt me into giving up the life my uncle had helped me build. So I looked them straight in the eye and said, no, I'm not coming back. This is my home now. The look on their faces was priceless. Shock, frustration, maybe even a little bit of anger. They'd come here expecting me to fold, but I was done with that. I'd spent years bending over backward trying to be part of their families, only to be shoved aside. I wasn't about to let them worm their way back in now that it was convenient for them. After that, they tried every trick in the book. My mom left me long voicemails about how she missed me and how family is everything. My dad sent me texts about how I was making a big mistake and how I'd regret it one day. They both kept bringing up how I was too young, how it was too much for me to handle on my own, and how they were just looking out for my best interests. It was pathetic. I ignored them. I knew they didn't actually care about me. They cared about what I had. They cared about the house, the money, the idea that they could somehow take control again now that my uncle was gone. But I wasn't about to let them. Living in that house alone wasn't easy. I missed my uncle every day. I'd find little things he left behind, notes on the fridge, a book he'd been reading, his favorite mug in the kitchen, and it had hit me all over again that he was gone. But at the same time, being in that house felt right. It felt like I was carrying on something he'd started, that I was honoring his memory by living the way he'd taught me to independent, strong, not letting people walk all over me. I didn't need my parents anymore, and I definitely didn't need their fake concern. For once in my life, I was finally in control, finally free to decide who got to be part of my life, and I wasn't going to let anyone take that away. After my uncle passed, it felt like I was caught in this constant tug of war. My parents wouldn't leave me alone, and their concern only got worse when they realized I wasn't budging on anything. Every few days, I'd get calls, texts, or voicemails from them. Sometimes they'd even swing by the house, thinking they could catch me off guard or something. But I kept ignoring them, sticking to my decision. This was my life, and I wasn't going to let them mess it up again. One day, my mom showed up at the house unannounced. I was in the middle of working on some paperwork my uncle had left behind, trying to figure out what needed to be done for the house. Suddenly, there's this knock at the door, and I open it to find her standing there, looking all dramatic like she was ready for some heartfelt reunion scene. She had that look, the one she always wore when she was trying to get her way. All sad eyes and I'm here for you vibes. Can we talk? She said, her voice soft like she was expecting me to break down and say yes. But I just stared at her, not moving. 
moving. I didn't even invite her in. I kept it short, saying, There's nothing to talk about, Mom. I'm fine on my own. Her face dropped for a second, but then she started on this speech about how family needs to be together and how she missed me. She even tried to say she was worried about me living alone. Like that wasn't the last thing on her mind all those years she pushed me to the sidelines. I told her I was doing just fine, but she wouldn't drop it. She kept going on and on about how hard it must be for me and how she was here to support me. I finally cut her off. I was blunt, maybe a little harsher than I meant to be, but I needed to say it. You know, if you really cared about supporting me, you wouldn't have treated me like a stranger in your own home. You and dad both made it pretty clear that I was nothing but an afterthought. So why are you here now, Mom? She looked stunned. She wasn't used to me standing up for myself like that. For a few seconds, she just stared at me, probably hoping I'd take it back or soften up, but I didn't. I just stood there, waiting, and eventually, she just muttered some excuse and left. I felt a weird mix of relief and anger watching her walk away. Part of me wanted to feel bad, but mostly I was just tired. Tired of them acting like they could just swoop in whenever they felt like it and play the caring parents. Not long after that, my dad decided to give it a shot. He came by the house, and Unlike my mom, he didn't even try to act emotional or caring. He was all business, getting straight to the point, saying how he thought it'd be better for everyone if I just move back with him and let him help manage things. He even had the nerve to say he was doing this for my own good, like I'd somehow lost my ability to think for myself. I laughed. I actually laughed in his face because I couldn't believe he thought that line would work on me. You think I can't handle this on my own, Dad? I asked him. Because that's funny, considering I've been handling things on my own for years now. You just never noticed. He looked taken aback, probably not expecting me to come at him like that, but I was done playing nice. I told him flat out that I didn't need his help, didn't need him trying to manage anything for me, and that this was my house, my life, and I wasn't going to let anyone else take control. He started to argue, but I didn't give him the chance. I just shut the door, cutting him off mid-sentence. It was that moment, closing the door in his face, that I felt this huge weight lift off me. For so long, I'd let them make me feel feel small, like I had to live up to their standards or prove something to them. But now... I realized I didn't need their approval. I didn't need them at all. My uncle had seen something in me, something worth trusting and supporting, and that meant way more to me than any fake concern my parents could muster up. Over the next few weeks, they kept trying, sending texts about missing me or wanting to rebuild our relationship. My dad even tried calling and left some long voicemail about how I was making a mistake and throwing away my future. But I knew better. I knew that the only reason they cared now was because my uncle had left me with some something valuable. If I hadn't inherited anything, they'd still be treating me like I was invisible. It took a while for the messages to stop, for the visits to become less frequent, but eventually they seemed to get the hint. Or maybe they just got tired of trying to push their way back into my life when it was clear I wasn't going to let them. Either way, it felt like I could finally breathe again, finally live in my uncle's house without constantly looking over my shoulder, wondering if they'd show up and try to manipulate me into giving up everything. Living alone wasn't always easy. I missed my uncle, missed having someone who actually cared about me, someone I could trust. But at the same time, I felt stronger than I ever had. I was doing things on my own, making decisions for myself, and building a life that didn't involve tiptoeing around my parents or worrying about their opinions. I was free, in a way I'd never been before. Sometimes I'd look around the house, see a note he'd left or a book he'd been reading, and it'd hit me all over again how much he'd done for me. He'd given me a place to belong, even if it was just for a little while, and he'd made sure I could keep that place even after he was gone. And that was enough. I didn't need my parents, didn't need their approval or their fake love. I had what I needed right here, and I was finally learning to stand on my own two feet. Update 1. After my dad tried to act like he was concerned about my well-being, saying he wanted me to come back and live with him, he went to court claiming that since I was underage, I needed to be under his roof and that he should have custody. He painted this picture of himself as a loving father, just looking out for his kid, never mind that he hadn't shown an ounce of real concern for me in years. Now suddenly, I was his priority. It was all too fake. The court ended up ruling that, yes, I could stay with my dad until I turned 18, since he was technically 
technically my legal parent, but the guardianship for my inheritance and the house still stayed with Mr. Benson. My dad tried to argue that he should be able to control my inheritance and the house as well, but thankfully Mr. Benson didn't back down. He told the judge that my uncle's wishes were clear and he was there to make sure those were respected. So, my dad got partial control over my life for those last two months, but he didn't get his hands on the house or the money. I could see the frustration on his face whenever he came by, pretending to check up on me, all while throwing side eyes at Mr. Benson. He was so transparent. It was all about the inheritance and the house. My dad wanted the property, and he wasn't shy about trying to manipulate me into thinking it was somehow the right thing to let him have it. Once he realized he couldn't force anything with Mr. Benson around, he started putting on this act, trying to be the sweetest, most supportive dad. He'd drop little hints, saying stuff like, you know, your old room is still there if you want to come back. And it's been so nice having you around again, like old times. Like old times? The guy barely looked at me for years, and now he wanted to act like we had this deep bond. He started bringing up the house more and more, trying to make it seem like he was concerned about managing it. It's a lot of responsibility, he'd say, keeping up with a property and all the financial stuff. When you turn 18, you could hand it over to me and I'd make sure everything's in order. You know I only want what's best for you. I played along, nodding and acting like I was considering it. I could see him starting to relax, thinking he had me convinced. He'd talk about all these plans for the house, acting like it was a done deal. He even started telling people in his life that he'd be taking care of my uncle's property soon, like he was already in control. I just kept my mouth mouth shut and pretended to go along with it, letting him think he had me fooled. In reality, I was just counting down the days until I turned 18. I didn't trust him for a second, but I figured it was easier to play along than to deal with any more drama. I didn't want him to get suspicious or try to force something before my birthday. I just needed to make it to midnight on my 18th, and then I'd be free. As my birthday approached, my dad's attitude got even weirder. He started calling me his little girl again, and he'd drop these hints about how family sticks together and how how he was always there for me. The whole thing felt like some rehearsed performance. I could see the desperation behind his smiles, his eyes darting around the house like he couldn't wait to claim it for himself. On the night before my birthday, he made this big show of celebrating with me, ordering takeout and acting all fatherly. He was going on and on about how proud he was of me, saying things like, I can't believe you're all grown up, and I know you'll make the right choice about the house. It was all leading up to him casually mentioning, we should make the transition easy, right? You could just sign the property over to me and I'll take care of everything. Less stress for you, you know. I kept my face blank, nodding along, pretending to agree. Inside, I was just biding my time, watching the clock. Midnight was so close, and I knew that once that moment hit, I'd be done with him for good. When the clock finally struck 12, I was officially 18. I didn't even bother saying goodbye. I had packed a small bag earlier and had a friend waiting for me nearby. As soon as the date changed, I slipped out of the house without looking back. I felt a rush of freedom, like a weight was lifted off me that I didn't even fully realize I'd been carrying. I stayed with my friend for a few days, blocking all calls and messages from my dad. He went ballistic when he realized I was gone. He left voicemails, texts, everything, saying how betrayed he felt and how I was ruining the family. But none of it mattered anymore. I was finally free from his grip, free to make my own choices without his manipulation hanging over me. Once I knew he couldn't touch my inheritance or the house, I cut him off completely. Mr. Benson helped me sort out everything, making sure my dad wouldn't have any way to meddle with my my uncle's estate. I told Mr. Benson everything and he just nodded, understanding completely. He'd been my uncle's friend for years and he knew the kind of person my dad was. I could tell he was relieved that I was finally taking charge, that I was moving forward on my terms. Walking away that night was the best decision I ever made. I didn't need my dad and I didn't need his so-called help. My uncle had trusted me with his legacy and I wasn't going to let anyone, not even my own father, take that away from me. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for cutting my parents for good? Tell me in the comment down below.